When I first started teaching, goggles were an interesting problem for me um, the, for a number of reasons. One was that they simply just didn't have very many in my classroom. Uh, it was a time when wearing goggles was something you did only as a last resort. Uh, in chemistry, we had a few goggles, but not a great number of them. Over the evolution of my teaching, I became more and more aware of the real need for wearing goggles and started looking at ways to get my students to wear goggles. And, and quite frankly, it, it was an annoying process because, you know, you bring them in, you go through the safety rules, you talk about how you have to wear goggles. You cannot work in the laboratory without goggles. And so I evolved in the way I did that. I mean, initially it was walking around the room and, you know, no, the goggles are no good on the tabletop. No, the goggles don't work on the back of your head. No, they don't work on your forehead. No, they don't work on your neck and, and so on. I would spend all of my time in the lab walking around the classroom yelling at kids to put their goggles on. So I did the things that you know I heard other teachers talking about. I deducted points from their lab grade. If you don't have your goggles on, it's five points off. If you don't have your goggles on, you're out of the lab immediately. You can't come back in. If you don't have your goggles on, you fail. If you don't have your goggles on, you know, on and on and on. Just it went down the, the line. It, but again, and this is partly evolution in, in my whole philosophy of teaching. At some point, I just kept looking at this stuff and going, this is all negative. I don't really want to kick my kids out of class any more than I want to see some kid get kicked out of school for three days. It doesn't make any sense to me. And so I started looking for more positive ways to deal with it, to get kids to wear their goggles. Um, and also ways where I wasn't the one that was the policeman in my classroom. That it wasn't always me wandering around talking to kids and saying, hey, put those goggles on now. You can't do that. And the thing that came up eventually, and I think I heard this from someone else, I have no idea where it originated, but somebody I think started talking about using extra credit for catching people without their goggles. This just made all kinds of sense to me. A, if I give Johnny a bonus point for turning in somebody else in the classroom without their goggles on. I'm not the one that does it. Add to it the fact that now I've got 24 pairs of eyes watching like hawks. And in my honors classes, that's especially valid because those kids, as you know, would sell their grandmother for a bonus point. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way they are. And so this was kind of neat because now I'd walk around the room and I could focus on the laboratory work. I could be you know, really excited about what was going on, and, and that was kind of cool. And you know, I'd be over in the corner someplace, and Mr. Lewis, Mr. Lewis, someone don't have their goggles on. It was great. Go over and give him a bonus point. And that was wonderful. Again, you might guess what happens with this. There's the kid sitting in the classroom going, I'm failing and I'm not going to pass. Hey, Ralphie, I'll take my goggles off for five bucks and you can catch me. The entrepreneurs in the classroom. <laughs> so we started having to develop some levels of punishment to go along with it. And the, and the first level of punishment when you didn't have your goggles on was simply that the next day, not getting kicked out of the class, not losing points, but the next day, during whatever lecture, or whatever was going on, or the next time we had lecture, you got to wear your goggles during the period. Now, I even eliminated my responsibility there because to get your bonus point for catching whoever it was without their goggles on, you had to come to me the next day and remind me that Johnny didn't have his goggles on so that I would then be able to give them. So I was out of the whole loop. Of course, all of my students were mad at each other, but 
they liked me, and that was kind of neat. <laughs> now, the other part of it that I, that I started doing was that this whole thing about on your forehead and neck, and, and I, I just started goofing around with it one day, and I, and I kept doing it because I thought it was kind of fun. You know, I came in one day and said, you know, some of you will want to wear your goggles down here. And that's fine. I have no problem if you wish to protect your neck or Adam's apple. If you feel that's your best feature, <laughs> then go right ahead and put a pair of goggles down there. But you're going to have to wear a pair of goggles over your eyes. If you want to wear, I got lots of goggles. You can wear two pair if you want. If you feel that your bangs, you paid big money for this hair dot do, you can wear goggles on your bangs. That's fine with me. But you're going to have to wear a pair of goggles over your eyes. You can put two pair on. You know, if, if you feel that, and, and I've spent a lot of time working on this part of me, if you feel that your stomach or navel is the most important part of your body that you want to protect, I have no problem with that. I'll get you a pair of goggles with a long strap, and you can wear those goggles around your navel. And that's no problem at all. If you've got a portion of your body that you want to cover with a pair of goggles, I'll find a way to get them there. <laughs> and so that was, you know, that is just the attitude. Again, the kids are sitting there, got into it a little bit. It was fun to do. Once again, it's like make a joke out of it, but hey, they remembered it. Hey, remember when you had 11 pairs of goggles on? You had them all on your elbows and down on your knees. And yeah, it's like, hey, you're supposed to wear these things. I really do care about it. If you're going to wear a splash goggle, you want something that comes down and fits over top. It's probably going to fog up occasionally, but you want it so it fits tight. So that if you get hit with something, if a, a, some unbelievable thing happens, <laughs> and you might, and this is important to remember, you will never splash something in your own face. That's highly unlikely you're going to throw the beaker up this way. Someone else will spill something on you when you're not looking. But if you're wearing splash goggles while your nose is gone, the rest of your face is probably doing OK. There's another level of punishment that John's going to talk about now <laughs> while I go away. <laughs> I think I got as much on me as I did on him. When we um, were doing workshops years ago, um, a man named Jim Tarnowski, um, whose name is down here at the bottom, he was teaching at Avon High School in Indianapolis. He had come up with a goggle song. And his deal was, he would teach the students the song, as I'm going to do to you, uh, for you, with you, pretty soon. Um, if a student was caught without their goggles, then the deal was they had to stand with him and sing the goggles song. You get caught a second time, you have to stand alone and sing the goggles song. So now even the teacher is making fun of you. Third time, on the table, put a dance with it. <laughs> Don't know if it ever got to that or not. But, I've got the lyrics over here. I'll teach them to you. I want to point out, though, that you see stomp here? That's silent. You don't say stomp. But what you do is you stomp. Now, I'm not a great singer, but once I pick a key, any of about, I must know about it, 42, 43 of them? <laughs> That's the chromatic scale, I think. I'm not sure. Anyway, whatever key I start in, I'm more than likely going to wind up pretty close to when I'm done. So we'll go through it. You see the lyrics. I will do it once. And if you want to join in a second time, feel free. Here we go. Oh, the melody um, is a totally unrecognizable tune. It starts off with the theme from The Great Escape, because Jimmy really liked the movie. Uh, then he just kind of wandered off, so it, there's no particular melody. You just have to learn it by hearing it. Here we go. Goggles, you love your goggles. 
They will keep your eyes from burning out. So wear your goggles upon your eyeballs. If you don't, you must stay out. Simple, right? The stomp is silent, but not the foot. So if you're going to sing it with me this time, you have to stomp. Let's try a different. I don't know if it's a different key or not, but we'll just do whatever we get here. So, goggles, you love your goggles. They will keep your eyes from burning out. So wear your goggles upon your eyeballs. If you don't, you must stay out. One more thing, if it works for you, use it. 